On behalf of the uh, University of Chicago and the Department of Energy, I want, want to welcome you to today's event entitled Launch to the Future Quantum Internet. I would like to extend a special welcome to several of our guests and speakers. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker, Mayor of Chicago Lori Lightfoot, Representative Bobby Roche, UIUC Chancellor Robert Jones, B33 CEO Brett Henderson, Argon National Laboratory Director Paul Kearns, Fermilab Director Nigel Lockyer, leading quantum scientists and the national media team. I want to thank our co-host Secretary of Energy Dan Bouillette and Under Secretary Paul Dabar from the United States Department of Energy. I also want to thank our congressional representatives who cannot be here today, but have sent us warm and encouraging messages of support. I want to thank all of the guests and speakers who are attending virtually through the live stream. These are unprecedented times, and we want to be sure that we showcase this exciting announcement while preserving safety at our, uh, the safety of our distinguished speakers and guests. In accordance with city and state directives, we have implemented significant capacity controls here today and are exercising all safety protocols, including the mandatory use of masks, except when you speak, social distancing, and compliance with travel restrictions. I know that many of you are on social media or using hashtag quantum blueprint to chronicle today's event. Please use this hashtag when sharing messages, images, or videos with your networks. The live stream is also being recorded and will be released later. Let me now talk about why we are here. Today is a particularly important day for us. The last several months have been very difficult for uh, all of us. Today is different. Today we're reminded of our ambition, our aspirations, and we're here for an exciting announcement by the Department of Energy about a completely new type of internet. An internet that will rely on quantum mechanical principles. A quantum internet that will change the way in which we communicate. Creating this quantum internet will require the combined efforts of scientists, engineers from across the nation. It will require that new partnerships be forged between universities national laboratories, and industry. It will require significant investments and visionary leaders who can help us realize the promise of quantum engineering. This is an extraordinarily demanding challenge, and the, Dep the Department of Energy has developed a blueprint for how to do this, which they will unveil for us today. For several decades, the University of Chicago has been honored to partner with the Department of Energy in its management and oversight of Argonne National Laboratory and Fermilab. Through that relationship, we have had opportunity to witness DOE's commitments to the labs and the DOE's deep support of quantum research underway at our national laboratories. We have also been very fortunate to have the support of the state of Illinois which recognizes the level of talent available at our research institutions and understands the promise of technological innovation for our economy. We are particularly pleased that this announcement is taking place here at the University of Chicago, where in collaboration with Argonne, Fermilab, and other leading research institutions in the region, groundbreaking science is being conducted not only in quantum, but also in many other areas of science and engineering. This transformative research is helping to drive a regional ecosystem of innovation in partnership with industry that will bring enormous benefits, not only to the city of Chicago, but also the state of Illinois, the country, and the world. Let me welcome you once again and begin our formal program. Our first speaker today is Governor J.B. Pritzker. In less than his two years in office, Governor Pritzker has quickly developed a well-deserved reputation for his dynamic, long-term vision for economic development. 
He understands the critical importance of collaboration and partnership. And he's intensely focused on building a strong economy based on state-of-the-art technology, robust higher education, and private partnerships. His support of the quantum exchange, the Chicago Quantum Exchange, and other innovation hubs has positioned Illinois for success in groundbreaking research. And his efforts are ensuring that Illinois continues to attract top talent from across the nation to Chicago. Welcome, Governor Pritzker. Thank you very much, Vice President De Pablo, and I'm very grateful to you and to President Zimmer for your leadership of one of the state's most esteemed universities. And of course, Secretary Dan Briette, thank you and welcome. Uh, Under Secretary Paul DeBar, it's my privilege to welcome you both back to the state of Illinois. Thank you and keep coming back. Our history of innovation in Illinois is part of who we are. From the invention of the zipper to the development of the magnetic resonance imager, from the birth control pill to the nuclear reactor, from the original TV remote control to the first skyscraper, from the invention of the cell phone to the first graphical web browser, Illinois' world-class institutions have been fertile ground for the exploration that has propelled the world forward. We have an extraordinary technology workforce, two national laboratories, more than 100 incubators and accelerators, uh, and world-class research universities with global leadership in business, engineering, and the sciences. Illinois produces 10% of all the computer science grads in the entire nation. Our tech startups produce the highest returns for venture capitalists of any state. Innovation is in the DNA of the state of Illinois. So Mr. Secretary, Illinois would be delighted to put to work our capability and drive for revolutionary technological change as the Department of Energy's choice to launch development of a national quantum internet. Already, the Chicago Quantum Exchange has established Illinois as a leading global hub for this kind of research, and I'm proud that our state has dedicated $200 million to this groundbreaking effort with new facilities coming to the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and right here to the University of Chicago. I want to thank our universities, our national laboratories, and the many brilliant scientists and researchers who have quietly dedicated their lives to advancing technology's next frontier. You know, the conditions under which we make this announcement aren't, frankly, anything like what we would have imagined a year ago. The COVID-19 pandemic has presented so many challenges. It's changed the world as we know it, and it's carried with it an awful lot of pain. But it's also reminded us of the importance of investing in science and innovation. Doctors and researchers and scientists around the world are able to work at a once unimaginable pace to find a vaccine or a cure for COVID-19. And that's in part because of our nation's history of making groundbreaking government investments in technological advances to make life better for all humankind. Chicago and Illinois are proud to once again play an important role in building a better future. So I want to offer my congratulations and appreciation to the Department of Energy, to the University of Chicago, to the University of Illinois, to Director Kearns and Director Lockyer, and our national laboratories across the United States, and all who've been involved in this critical step forward for our state, for our nation, and for the world. Thank you, and with that, I'll turn it back over to Juan de Pablo. We are honored to have with us today Mayor Mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot. Since taking office, she has been focused on bringing more economic opportunities to the diverse neighborhoods of Chicago, a goal that is shared by the university. She's been a strong supporter of the National Laboratories and the University of Chicago. 
especially with regard to increasing innovation and economic development. She played an important role in helping us bring both Argonne and Fermilab researchers to the city through the new offices here in Hyde Park. She and her office has been wonderful partners in helping us and the laboratories bring science programming to Chicago's schools and, <clears throat> and colleges. Most recently, as part of the city's response to the pandemic, the mayor leveraged the groundbreaking research from Argonne National Lab to model how COVID might spread in the city and in the state and design interventions that might help us act better on the basis of the most advanced supercomputing calculations. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Lori Lightfoot. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I do want to begin by giving a special thanks to our governor, um, not only for his leadership during this very challenging time, but his decades-long leadership in advancing Illinois' tech and innovation economy. Thank you very much, Governor. We are the better for the work that you have done and that you continue to do. I also want to acknowledge um, uh, Vice President uh, De pa Pablo, uh, as well as President Zimmer, and uh, Bob, we wish you Godspeed in your recovery. The University of Chicago is very special to me, um, and as an alum of this great university, I could not be prouder uh, to be here. Although as an alum of the law school, they usually didn't let us cross uh, the midway, but I'm grateful that you let this uh, alum into the rarefied air of the business school. I also want to uh, thank our representatives from the scientific community uh, that are here. And finally, of course, I want to thank the Secretary uh, for being here, as well as Undersecretary Debar, and everyone at the Department of Energy for joining us here today. This is a tremendous opportunity. I think the governor did well to make the case, and I'll add a few, uh, a few words as well. Uh, quantum internet is not something that's on every, but the tip of the tongue of everyone, but I think we all recognize the importance of this moment and the power um, that it uh, possesses to really change everything in the way in which we process information and also security uh, of the internet. Today is about the future and how we as a nation will be taking the next steps in the nude frontier on quantum networking. How we develop it, how we build it, and how we bring it to scale. Turning cutting edge problems like memory storage and signal control into cutting edge technology. And in the process, broadening our understanding of quantum mechanics itself. If history is a guide, though, new technology doesn't necessarily replace the old. It enriches what we already have at our disposal. And we know something about that history in our city. This is where the world's first sustaining controlled nuclear chain reaction took place. Um, we are on that campus. And where the trading industry was modernized. And the University of Chicago and the University of Illinois are truly at the forefront of initiatives related to harnessing the power of hard science and technology. And with all the power of labs like Argonne and Fermilab, plus our robust tech community, which the governor spoke of, Mr. Secretary, we are well positioned to be a leader in the frontier of quantum networking driving science, industry, and national security all at once, giving our city and the entire nation the edge in fields like quantum computing and crypto cryptology, and applying it um, to other faster growing, high demand fields like cybersecurity, which is critically important to our nation. There is no better place to do it than right here in Chicago. And as I said earlier, Knowing, I know something about the power of partnerships, and no city demonstrates that better than us. Um, as was indicated in the introduction, Argonne Lab has been our partner in our response through COVID-19. Uh, many of the things that we are able to do, how we are able to forecast where we needed ahead is because of the generosity, but also the technology um, and the strength of Argonne coming to the table and being our partner. And with our universities like U of C, our two great city-run educational system, and our incubators like 1871 and the Polsky Center, our innovation campuses like DPI, and our cutting-edge technology scene, Chicago is where it's happening. We, I want to also say another word. 
One of the things that we've learned through our response to COVID-19 is about partnerships and about collaboration. The governor and I talk about this all the time. But what we've also seen is collaboration and partnership across lines that where people are normally competitors. What I think this experience has taught us is that there is tremendous power in partnership and collaboration. And I'm confident that if we are able to um, get one of these awards and become a hub city, we're gonna build on the collaboration that is already hard at work across our universities, across our laboratories, our tech centers, our life sciences. This moment has changed Chicago for the better and we are well positioned to take advantage of this opportunity. Again, I thank you all for being here. I welcome you to the great city of Chicago. My pleasure to be part of this incredible um, presentation and event. Thank you. I now have the privilege to recognize Representative Bobby Rush. Congressman Rush has represented the first district of Illinois where the University of Chicago is located since 1992, almost three decades. He is strategically positioned as the chair of the Energy Subcommittee of the House Energy and Commerce Committee and has been very supportive of the National Laboratories and the University in that role. The congressman has been working for the better part of a decade to connect the talent and resources of Argonne with his bright young constituents to help build the STEM workforce of tomorrow. Most recently, we were delighted that he joined us for an event in February to announce the opening of Argonne in the city, in the South Side, which will greatly enhance our joint efforts to build that workforce on the South Side of Chicago. Welcome, Congressman Rush. Good afternoon to the Honorable Secretary Goulet, the Under Secretary Nama, to Governor Prisker, to our great Mayor, Mayor Lightfoot, President Zimmer, uh, and to Vice President for the National Laboratories, uh, Dr. Uh, Nepala. I want to thank you, Dr. Lepano, for uh, your introduction. And I want to thank the Department of Energy, the Argonne National Lab, the Fermi Lab, the University of Chicago, for holding this great, outstanding event. In 1980, the University of Chicago began its mission to equip the nation and its principal resident, the South Side's first congressional district of Illinois, with this uncompromising commitment to rigorous academics and paramount discovery. Since its establishment, the university, alongside key partners at the Department of Energy, and by extension, the National Laboratory Systems, Argonne, and Fermilab have charted the course to vital breakthrough. I said at the event in February that I am so proud of the, of the nation, our nation, national lab, because nowhere in the world is that such an assortment of talent, ingenuity, resource, expertise, and I might add genius, uh, nowhere in the world is that concentrated except in our great nation. The breakthroughs from these national labs span from the world's first self-sustaining controlled nuclear chain reaction to the characterization of the SARS-CoV-2 protein. And therefore, it comes as no surprise to any of us uh, that we convene here today 
for yet another installment and a significant increase uh, to, these, to this great partnership. Quantum computing and quantum internet have the power to change the way we exchange information and the way we ensure the security of some of our nation's most critical infrastructure, which includes our nation's electrical grid. The protection of our nation's grid is in the forefront of the thought process and the strategy and the opinions of my colleagues in the Congress and certainly on the Energy and Commerce Committee. The Chicago Quantum Exchange and its partners have made great strides in furthering uh, quantum technology. Coupled with the Department of Energy's blueprint for added quantum internet infrastructure, this will bring us steps closer to achieving these goals. So with that, I want to welcome uh, those visiting my district, the first congressional district of Illinois. And I look forward to, the, to today's discussion and the progress that is yet to come. Thank you and God bless. We're all here today at the invitation of University of Chicago President Robert Zimmer, and he wishes he could be with us today. Unfortunately, President Zimmer is not able to join us, but he asked me to expand a special welcome to all of you today. He's watching us on the live stream. In recognition of the significance of this announcement, he has prepared a brief video for us. Please. My thanks to everyone for joining us today for this exciting announcement. I want to extend special thanks to Energy Secretary Dan Brulette and Under Secretary Paul DeBar, as well as Governor J.B. Pritzker and Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot for their critical support of higher education, economic development, and building an innovation ecosystem for Chicago's future and the future of the state of Illinois. Today's announcement is a reflection of powerful collaborations developed in recent years involving the University of Chicago's Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering and our affiliated national laboratories, Argonne National Laboratory and Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory. Together, our institutions drive research, education, and technology for our region and for the nation. The close collaborations among our scientists and engineers provide unique opportunities for discovery and innovation. Our growing efforts in quantum science would not be possible without the leadership of the Department of Energy, particularly Secretary Brulette and Undersecretary DeBar, who have shown vision in leading the nation toward the development of the quantum internet. Governor Pritzker's leadership and vision on the state level have been essential, and he continues to support the impact that this technology can have on the economic development in the state of Illinois. The next several decades will be defined by our ability to push the frontiers of science, and sadly, by our ability to respond decisively to crises, including pandemics. To remain competitive, we will need to accelerate the discovery of new molecules and functional materials. We will have to develop new quantum technologies, and we will have to rely increasingly on artificial intelligence to push the frontiers of knowledge, particularly in the realms of science and engineering. Crisis response, materials discovery, quantum technologies, and AI for science. These are all areas that require extraordinary talent, large partnerships, state-of-the-art infrastructure, dynamic ecosystems, and a scale of investment 
that are beyond what individual institutions working in isolation could hope to offer. These are all areas in which the University of Chicago, Argonne, Fermilab, and the Department of Energy have established formidable efforts to lead the world. Harnessing the laws of quantum mechanics holds great promise for the future of research, education, and technological applications that offer far-reaching benefits for our society. In the particular case of quantum engineering, our combined resources create a powerful hub of more than 140 scientists and engineers brought together through the Chicago Quantum Exchange to create one of the world's largest concentrations of talent working on quantum science and engineering. In February of this year, scientists and engineers from the Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering and Argonne established one of the longest land-based quantum networks in the nation. This 52-mile testbed is poised to become an early building block for the quantum internet, a new way to send, receive, and process information based on the principles of quantum mechanics. This work is notable because it involves defining and creating entirely new fields of study and with them, new frontiers for fundamental science and technological application that can improve people's lives. Contributing to the development of the quantum internet is the sort of ambitious research initiative that thrives with the University of Chicago's distinctive combination of scientific eminence, operational capacity, and determination to translate breakthroughs into positive impact. We are committed to pursuing this promising area of quantum science, whose potential recalls the first development of the internet in the late 1960s. Our work today will lay the foundation for further advances in secure quantum communication, advanced computation, and the development of new businesses and economic opportunities. Today's event, represents a milestone for science and engineering at the University of Chicago in partnership with Argonne, Fermilab, and the Department of Energy. I am very pleased to welcome you here to celebrate the work that has been done and the promising future before us. Argonne National Laboratory conducts leading-edge basic and applied scientific research in virtually every scientific discipline, including quantum information sciences. For several years, I've had the great pleasure of working with Paul Kearns in his role as director of Argonne National Lab. Since 2017, Paul has focused on increasing the impact of the National Laboratory at Argonne for the U.S. and global scientific communities. Under Paul's leadership, I know Argon is fully committed to supporting the necessary research and development for quantum internet of the future. Argon will leverage its multidisciplinary teams, world-class facilities, and powerful scientific tools to pursue the advancement of technologies for quantum information, quantum computing, and quantum sensing. Paul, please join me. Thank you very much, Juan. It's a real pleasure for me to be here today to announce the, the roadmap for developing the first quantum internet in the United States. Uh, this is the start of a new age of communication, to borrow, borrow a phrase. This is about the future. Um, I have the privilege of uh, being the director of Argonne National Laboratory in Argonne uh, Fermilab, the University of Chicago, along with the University of Illinois, are really a focal point for research in advancing the frontiers of quantum information science. We have nurtured an R&D ecosystem in the Midwest that is robust, collaborative, uh, both of which is needed for success. With our history of pivotal discoveries, pioneering collaborations and industry, with industry and universities, and the powerful facilities and scientific tools we have, we are propelling this emerging field forward. 
At Argonne, we have three national scientific user facilities for helping spur further development in quantum information science. The Advanced Photon Source, one of the world's brightest X-ray sources, the Center for Nanoscale Materials, and the Argonne Leadership Computing Facility. Both locally and across the nation, we foster important industry partnerships that accelerate technology innovation and commercialization. We are engaging with industry as part of the Chicago Quantum Exchange, which is key to advancing and scaling communication systems that have better, more secure encryption. Argonne researchers has, have also made great advances with the quantum loop experiment, the 52-mile test bed that was mentioned by President Zimmer. We are applying quantum networks to real-world conditions in this case. I'm also pleased to announce that we are working closely with our colleagues at Fermilab to extend the quantum loop to Fermilab to provide the first national laboratory to national laboratory quantum network. Uh, we are pursuing a wide range of other projects and materials for quantum information, computing, and sensing. For example, we are developing and delivering hardware and software to run a multi-qubit system that addresses different states of qubits or the basic unit of quantum information and control qubit errors in real time. This is crucial for a quantum internet. We are also working to overcome challenges in quantum entanglement and transduction which will help us develop a hybrid quantum link between optical and microwave uh, qubits, mediated by a spin-based quantum transducer. These discoveries, collaborations, and facilities are only the start of this grand endeavor. That's why we're excited to roll out this roadmap. Uh, with our cap capacity to do great science, I am confident that Argonne, Fermilab, and the University of Chicago will help America achieve a full-fledged quantum internet. This is one of the most important technology innovations of the 21st century. It'll lead the way to many remarkable benefits for society at large. I would like to thank our hosts this afternoon, the University of Chicago, President Zimmer and Vice President De Pablo. They are exceptional supporters of the National Laboratories. I would also like to express my appreciation for Secretary Briette and Undersecretary DeBar at the Department of Energy. They have made a quantum internet a top priority. Their leadership is promoting economic growth and national security. Lastly, I would like to recognize Governor Pritzker, uh, Congressman Bobby Rush, and Mayor, Mayor Lightfoot. I certainly thank you for being here to mark this uh, very special occasion for us. Together, we will accelerate the science and technology that drives U.S. prosperity and security. Thank you for helping us, the nation, really, maintain and expand our global leadership in quantum information science. Thank you. Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory, or Fermilab, is the United States Department of Energy's national laboratory that specializes in high energy particle physics. It is located 45, 45 miles from Chicago in Batavia, Illinois. Since 2007, Fermilab has been operated by the Fermi Research Alliance, or FRA, a joint venture of the University of Chicago and the University's Research Association, URA. Nigel Lockyer, is the director of Fermilab. He is our next speaker. An experimental particle physicist by training, he manages a large complex of particle accelerators and sophisticated, amazing international experiments that study the nature of matter, energy, space, and time. Thousands of scientists from around the world use Fermilab facilities for their research. Fermilab generates some of the most powerful neutrino beams in the planet to explore the laws of physics and is the laboratory where some of the fundamental particles that we learn about in our textbooks were discovered. Please join me in welcoming Nigel Lockyer. Mr. Secretary, Under Secretary DeBar, Congressman Rush, Governor Pritzker, uh, Mayor. Uh, Chancellor Jones, uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and uh, good afternoon, President Zimmer. Thanks for bringing your support to this occasion. For more than 50 years, Fermilab has been a global, global leader in particle physics. We've discovered three fundamental particles of matter here in Illinois, the top quark, 
the bottom quark, and the tau neutrino, nature's smallest quantum constituents, in addition to the zipper, uh, Governor. As Undersecretary DeBar has said, particle physics is quantum physics. Particles live in the quantum world. In our day jobs, we study how the universe began and how it evolved from the earliest moments, tiny fractions of a second after the Big Bang. We seek to understand the quantum properties of space and time, of black holes, of dark matter, and dark energy. We're investigating the elusive neutrinos using the most intense, I said most intense, not just one of the intense beings in the world, produced by the largest accelerator complex in the United States. Many of the world leaders in these fields are at the University of Chicago, Argonne National Lab, and Fermilab. The Fermilab quantum program grew out of connections to universities. Dr. Anna Grassolino, who is here today, and her team are working with the University of Chicago and Northwestern University on connections between superconducting qubits and superconducting cavities. Fermilab's quantum network initiative began with a collaboration with Dr. Maria Spiripulu from Caltech and her group. This partnership has been growing ever since. The development of quantum sensors may be the only way to directly detect dark matter and dark energy that makes up most of the energy of the universe. Argon is a world leader in high performance computing. Fermilab was the second website created in the United States. Together, Argonne and Fermilab, as two of the Department of Energy's labs, are natural partners in driving quantum computing and quantum networks forward. Along with the University of Chicago and Chicagoland High Tech Industries, we will all partner to build out the quantum internet. We start locally and expand outward to our region, to Illinois universities, and the other national laboratory quantum centers. Daniel Burnham, the great American architect from the beginning of the 20th century, told us to make big plans, aim high, but the success of those big plans will depend on diverse talents and diverse points of view working together. One of the great strengths of Chicagoland is the amazing diversity of backgrounds, culture, and talent that we can attract to make the dream of the quantum internet a reality. Our goal is clear lead the world in quantum technologies and make Chicagoland a hub of high technology. To close, thank you, Mr. Secretary, Under Secretary DeBar for your support and leadership in leading a bold initiative in quantum information science. Thank you to President Zimmer for his leadership in bringing together researchers at the Chicago Quantum Exchange. Thank you, Congressman Rush, for your leadership of Chicagoland and the nation. Today's announcement at the University of Chicago of the blueprint for the quantum internet will jumpstart thousands of talented researchers to action across the Department of Energy's National Laboratory Complex, the nation's leading universities, and partnering industries. David Ashlam is the Liu family professor in molecular engineering at the Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering at the University of Chicago, and he's also a senior scientist at Argonne National Laboratory. He's the founder and director of the Chicago Quantum Exchange, one of the nation's leading hubs for quantum information sciences. During his career, David has helped to develop and shape the emerging field of quantum information sciences and technology. He has done so as a researcher through pioneering scientific discoveries, as a mentor to many, many students, and as an advisor to US policymakers, funding agencies, and industry executives. David, please join me. Thank you, Juan. <clears throat> and thank you. And as President Zimmer mentioned earlier, through very strong collaborations with the Department of Energy, Chicago's become one of the nation's leading centers for quantum science and technology. In addition to making very critical scientific advances in the field, our region is also driving the development of new technologies and applications that will revolutionize the way we communicate with one another. So unlike the world around us today, nature behaves very differently as we just heard at the atomic scale. 
and it follows the world of quantum physics. And in this quantum world, particles can exist in multiple states at the same time, like on and off, but simultaneously, and they can be entangled. That is, they can share information with one another even over very long distances and even without a physical connection. So while this special world is invisible to us, a quantum internet is going to harness these strange properties to build new types of devices with powerful applications in communication, national security, finance, and medicine. For example, one of the interesting aspects of quantum data is the act of looking at it changes it. So this means if we use a quantum network to send or receive information and someone tries to eavesdrop, they'll destroy the message. It's quantum secure. It's virtually unhackable. So as we've heard this afternoon, we've laid the foundation of a quantum internet here in Chicago, which is home to the University of Chicago, our two Department of Energy National Laboratories, along with the University of Illinois and Northwestern. This brings us an enormous collective expertise of nearly 150 quantum scientists to make Illinois one of the leading centers for this emerging area. Now, we just heard that earlier this year, scientists from Argonne and the University of Chicago harnessed the properties of entanglement and entangled pairs of single photons through the suburbs across a 52-mile optical fiber network, establishing one of the longest land-based quantum networks in the United States. And it's being extended to Fermilab, as we just heard as well, for quantum computing, sensing, and communication. We'll use this network to also teleport states around the Chicago metropolitan area. That's right. Um, exploring new ways to transmit information in partnership with industry. So the quantum internet will also enable fantastic new scientific efforts to attack problems difficult, if not impossible, to solve with today's technology and today's computing schemes. It allows us to build quantum supercomputers, to design new materials, develop new pharmaceuticals, and deploy ultra-precise sensors to monitor the behavior of our planet. It'll even let us build powerful telescopes to explore exoplanets and stars. But to get there, we need to work together and draw from a very broad network of resources, leveraging the scientific excellence of the national laboratories and our strong industrial partners along with our university faculty. Our national labs operate some of the most powerful instruments in the world to synthesize, to image, and to characterize matter at the atomic scale, which is critical to build these technologies. And as we also heard this afternoon, we have a special hub for integrating the expertise of all of these entities, the Chicago Quantum Exchange. This organization is important to the city, it's important to the state and to the nation, not just to drive scientific discoveries and to transition them to technologies, but to train and produce a quantum-ready workforce for the nation. A new generation of quantum engineers will need these students to fuel the opportunities to launch the companies and to create new jobs. So finally, I wanted to mention over 50 years ago, when today's internet was created, few of us could have envisioned how it's actually used today. So it's hard to imagine how 50 years in the future, the quantum internet will impact people's lives. But it will, and it's very exciting to be here as part of the beginning. So thank you very much. It is a pleasure to have Eden Figueroa with us today. Eden is the group leader of the Quantum Information Technology Group at the University of Stony Brook and a joint appointee at Woodhaven National Laboratory. Most recently, and then with a team of other researchers, built a quantum network testbed that connects several buildings at Brookhaven National Lab. Using unique portable quantum entanglement sources and an existing DOE communications fiber network. A significant step in building a large scale quantum network that can transmit information over long distances. Welcome again. Thank you very much. Um, I kindly thank our host of the University of Chicago, Argonne, Fermilab, and the Department of Energy for the invitation to participate in this historic event. The construction of a global quantum technology enhanced internet has been the net plus ultra of the scientific quantum communication community for many years. It is widely believed that such quantum internet could be the solution for many of the biggest issues we face in our digital era for example, by providing quantum protected privacy, as well as enhancing the coordination and synchronization of data transmission using quantum entanglement, as just described. Um, getting to this point today, where this goal, we see it right there, appears attainable in the horizon, has been, has been a long journey. Appropriately, 
I want to pay homage to the great efforts of the quantum communication community using the prism of my own experience using two anecdotes. In 2008, I was a grad student at the University of Calgary defending my thesis, which concerned the development of quantum memories. Quantum memories are quantum gizmos that we use to build these quantum networks we discuss. Um, at the end of my presentation, one of my mentors, Professor Barry Sanders, asked me, and then, um, what are you gonna do with those quantum memories? And I must say, I didn't have a proper answer. So he summarily pointed out, you have to build a quantum repeater. That's where you're gonna use them for. So that was lesson learned number one. A little bit later in 2012, I had a similar conversation with Professor Gerhard Rempe, uh, my supervisor at the Max Planck Institute in, in Munich, um, while we were reviewing our paper describing atomic based quantum networks. He said, and I remember very well, and then this experiment is very nice, but please tell me, how on earth are we gonna scale this? And that was, Hard lesson number two. These two major moments set the path forward, which are, they say, echoes out of the quantum communication community. Ever since, the goal has been very clear, to build scalable quantum repeaters. Evidently, such massive scientific challenge can only be tackled with a close synergistic collaboration between national laboratories, the ones we have here, academia, and the private sector. And this brings me into full circle uh, today I'm representing the state of New York, and there we are setting the necessary ecosystem to build quantum repeater networks. We recently finished the infrastructure connecting the Brookhaven and Stony Brook quantum laboratories over 140 kilometers in optical fiber. And thanks to the support of uh, the ASCAR office of the Department of Energy, we are constructing portable entangled sources and quantum memory buffers that then we will deploy throughout the network in the near future. Uh, moreover, we have formed a grand consortium of partners across the state, including Brookhaven National Labs, the Air Force Research Lab, the State University of New York, the City University of New York, the University of Rochester, and Cornell University, dedicated to developing a quantum internet prototype connecting all the way from Long Island to Buffalo. I must conclude with the following observation. A few days ago, I saw the joy of my students and the scientists at Brookhaven after the first quantum signals of the Long Island Quantum Network were measured. This made me realize that our quantum future is extremely bright. We have wonderful human potential to tackle this massive task ahead of us. I'm sure that together, DOE laboratories, universities, and the private sector community, we will build an interstate quantum internet hopefully connecting Illinois and New York. In this case, one quantum repeater at the time. So thank you very kindly for the opportunity and <laughs> my pleasure being here. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Maria Spiropoulo. She's a Shangji Chen professor of physics at Catan University and she's joining us today by video. In 2017, she founded with Caltech, NTNT, Fermilab, and JPL, the Alliance for Quantum Technologies and the InQNet Research Program, which has produced notable results on fundamental R&D in quantum information sciences and technology with an emphasis on quantum networks. I am extremely pleased to participate in this momentous event that Paul Dabar, our DOE Undersecretary for Science, put together with the University of Chicago and the two exceptionally successful local Illinois Office of Science laboratories, namely Fermilab and Argonne. Having been myself an Enrico Fermi Fellow at the University of Chicago a long, long time ago, I must take a few seconds to commemorate a complicated moment in science and human history. The first self-sustained nuclear reaction 78 years ago and the Trinity test 75 years ago. With great scientific discoveries and breakthroughs, we keep learning comes great responsibility. DOE's announcement of the United States quantum internet today is truly epoch-making, historic. Both the scientific and political leaders believe the construction of a quantum internet 
will shape the 21st century human technology culture in profound ways. At the Blueprint Workshop in January at Stony Brook, leading scientists from DOE's national laboratories and universities identified the opportunities and challenges we need to address in order to execute a strategic and methodical plan of construction of the quantum internet prototype that will connect national laboratories and other hubs in academia and the private sector. In the past three years, and in the context of the National Quantum Initiative that became law of the land, DOE took a leading role and fostered partnerships with, either, with other agencies, including NASA, the NSF, DOD, NIST, and NSA. The scale and complexity of constructing a quantum internet demand long-term, large-scale collaboration and commitment of the US scientific and technological resources to multi-institutional, multidisciplinary efforts that are commensurate with world leadership. Partnerships and close collaboration between government and private company will move us quickly and efficiently towards quantum towards quantum breakthroughs. The Blueprint Report notes that critical opportunities for new directions and spin-off applications should be encouraged by robust cooperation with quantum communication startups and large optical communications companies. A few years ago, with then AT&T's John Donovan and Caltex President Rosenbaum, we architected a plan to bring stakeholders and shareholders together and build prototype quantum, quantum internet systems. We joined forces with Fermilab, JPL, colleagues at NIST and other institutions and attracted brilliant, fearless young people with a diversity of backgrounds, culture and talent who are determined to build the quantum technologies of the 21st century. We applied the high energy physics MO of taking world changing ideas born at the universities and scaling them up at the national labs into full blown deployed systems. In that sense, we used the HEP mission oriented collaboration model that moves fast, iterates many times and incorporates technology improve them, improvements as we get them. I anticipate with great enthusiasm and excitement the execution of the quantum internet blueprint. Today's announcement by the Undersecretary is of historic significance. The challenge is one we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. Thank you. It is now with uh, great pleasure that I introduce Department of Energy Under Secretary of Science, Paul Dabar. Under Secretary Dabar serves as the department's principal advisor on energy research and science, driving this mission through programs that include nuclear and high energy particle physics, basic energy, advanced computing, fusion, biological and environmental research, and direct management, management over the department's national laboratory complex. And of course, their world-leading user facilities. Under Secretary Dabar is also the lead for technology commercialization activities for the department and its 17 national laboratories. He has been a tremendous partner for the University of Chicago and for our affiliated national laboratories. He has been pushing quantum sciences since day one. He was also instrumental in helping the labs establish a presence in the city of Chicago within the growing economic ecosystem of the region. Thank you for coming. I look forward to your remarks. Juan, thank you very much for having us here. And uh, everyone look around. This is what making history looks like. Uh, here we are at the University of Chicago, which is the number one generator Nobel Prize, uh, prizes in the world. And how appropriate that we at DOE, as we sometimes like to call it, the Department of Exploration, uh, asked the city to do this announcement here, since DOE is the largest supporter of Nobel Prize winners in physics and chemistry in the world. 
When Juan offered to do it at this wonderful location, he said quite casually to me, we do all of our Nobel Prize winning announcements here. So, <laughs> um, I want to focus on my comments today on how we got here. I'll skip past all the work done 100 years ago by Planck, Bohr, and Einstein and bring it forward to where we started our engagement. It started when the secretary was coming into office and we were talking with one of our predecessors who told us that quantum technologies were still a long way off. One thing I've learned in life is not to take the first input as gospel. The second input I had around that time was from Maria Spoilpoelu, who you just heard from, from Caltech and Fermilab, who came into my office with her trademark energy and enthusiasm and talking about the significant advances in quantum communications. That followed by us diving into the QIS topics with our national labs and fellow agencies, including the National Science Foundation and NIST at Commerce and at the White House with Michael Kratzios and the President, as well as private sector parties such as Google, IBM, AT&T, and others. At the same time, our friend Bob Zimmer and team created the Chicago Quantum Exchange. The leadership here in Chicago by the university and the national labs laid significant groundwork for today. And even though Bob is not with us today, I'd like to paraphrase Einstein by commenting on quantum mechanics. I'd like to think Bob Zimmer is around even though I am not observing him. <laughs> Very poor quantum joke. <laughs> okay. At that point, increased momentum continued with the leadership of Secretary Briette and the White House uh, passed a widely bipartisan bill on the National Quantum Exchange and was enthusiastically enacted about a year and a half ago, adding an additional $1.25 billion of additional funding into quantum science and quantum information technologies. I really enjoyed discussing Schrodinger's cat at a Senate hearing. <laughs> we might have had a few members perplexed, but as Einstein said, the more successes the quantum theory enjoys, the sillier it looks. We look forward to announcing the winners of the National Quantum Exchange Centers in the near future, uh, this next month, and I see a few people here who are part of those proposal teams. Momentum with investments nationally continued. I would like to point out an example right here in Chicago that occurred not that long ago. We announced uh, in a very short period of time, the following announcements all happened right here. We announced a five-fold increase in quantum uh, grants from the Department of Energy, followed by Tom Pritzker and the Pritzker Foundation endowing a very large portion of, of quantum information science at the university, followed by the state of Illinois' announcement as the governor was talking about the investment here and at the University of Illinois, and then finally, the university itself pulling down endowment to do further investments in the area. All that occurred basically in about a six week period. It was quite amazing to see all that. And then finally, while there was significant research and capital flowing into the private sector and quantum computing, but there wasn't quite as much flowing from the private sector into quantum networking. I went back and reread a book on DARPA, as we were talking about earlier, fu funding ARPANET, which was the original internet in the mid 1960s and the DARPA team at the Department of Defense uh, funding the original four modems of the internet, which, occurred, which were at Stanford, UCLA, UC Santa Barbara, and the University of Utah. The, the, the internet, I think as everyone knows, took 20 years to develop from that start in 1969 until the World Wide Web in 1989, with no real principle driving it, uh, bits and pieces of government funding and university funding until the commercial sector was allowed to join the internet 20 years later. Reviewing what was done uh, being developed in uh, quantum local area networks in New York, in Chicago, in Denver, at NIST by Commerce, and Los Angeles by Caltech, by people here at this event, we decided that the DOE National Labs could be the principal in driving the quantum internet. So we asked ourselves, why don't we build the national quantum internet connecting the national labs as a principles coast to coast, Brookhaven to Slack, border to border, INL to Sandia, working with universities concurrently in science and technology, connecting with universities all along, and concurrently working with the private sector. 
when we brought that up to the Office of Science at the UE, they said, sure, we can do that, which was a little surprising. They had with that enthusiasm for something that complicated. And why don't we get together all the top leaders in the country who know about this from all the universities uh, uh, to get all together to come up with a plan of how we're going to build the quantum internet stack, how we're going to build the hardware, how we're going to build the operating system, how we're going to build the application system, and how we're going to build out the networks, starting from the foundations going on in New York and in Chicago and elsewhere. And so that's what we did in February, with the last big event I did before COVID uh, challenges. And today's publication of the plan, which is now online, is a consensus of the nation's leaders on how to go execute that. But science and technology alone are not enough. Leadership and initiative are needed to bring out full possibilities. Today is about such leadership, American leadership on yet another frontier. Innovators who make a real impact figure out what people want before they themselves even know. To quote Henry Ford, if I would have asked customers what they wanted, they would have told me a faster horse. People don't know what they want until you show it to them. And that is what we are beginning today. Finally, here at the Center of Global Leadership and Nobel Prizes, I would like to make two predictions. One, someone will win a Nobel Prize in physics for quantum communications. And two, someone participating today will be a Nobel Prize winner. Which of you it will be, I don't know, but I look forward to seeing the impact of that. Thank you very much for having us here, Juan. Thank you, Paul. We've now come to the true reason that we're here today, to hear the announcement about the next era of science from United States Secretary of Energy, Dan Bouillet. Secretary Bouillet was appointed to his leadership role nearly a year ago. He brings a wealth of knowledge from over 30 years of experience in both industry and government to his role. He has been a wonderful supporter of the National Laboratory Complex and has pushed the Department of Energy to push the frontiers of knowledge in some of the most exciting emerging fields, including advanced materials, artificial intelligence, and quantum information sciences. We are honored that he has chosen the University of Chicago and the city of Chicago to share the exciting path ahead of our nation with respect to the quantum internet. And we look forward to learning more from him about the blueprint for the quantum internet. Welcome, Secretary DeBar. Thank you, Juan. What a great day. It is wonderful, absolutely wonderful, to be here on the campus of the University of Chicago as we unveil the blueprint for the quantum internet. And it's a great honor for me, and very humbling, I might add, to join so many of you uh, who are distinguished and accomplished individuals from academia, industry, government, for this exciting announcement. Please just take a moment and give yourself an incredible round of applause. You, you've earned this. Of course, a gathering like this one, one that's uh, brimming with such impressive intellectual ability and creativity is nothing new to this university. Since 1890, Individuals learning and teaching on this campus have endowed the nation and the world with groundbreaking discoveries in every possible field of human achievement, from anthropology to astronomy, from chemistry to computing. Just a cursory review of the history of this university would astound anyone. As Paul pointed out, 92 Nobel Prize winners, two Fields Medal recipients, eight Presidential Medal of Freedom honorees, winners of the Pulitzer Prize, National Book Award, Tonys, Grammys, Emmys, you name it, and it's right here. In 1907, 1907, physics professor Albert Michelson measured the speed of light and became the first U.S. scientist to win the Nobel Prize. Three and a half decades later, in 1942, as the mayor pointed out, Enrico Fermi and his colleagues conducted the first controlled, self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction 
under the University of Chicago football field, of all places, setting us on a course to the Manhattan Project, the origins of the Department of Energy. Then in 1999, Professor Ian Foster invented grid computing, paving the way for cloud computing. This school, this school has lived its motto to let knowledge grow from more to more and so be human life enriched. Growing knowledge and enriching human life through innovation is also at the foundation of what we do every single day at the U.S. Department of Energy. We're proud of the fact that DOE-supported research has produced 115 Nobel Prize winners in physics, chemistry, physiology, and medicine. And much of that work is advanced by our 17 award-winning national laboratories, two of which we've talked about today, Argonne and Fermi National Accelerator, that are here in this great city and managed by the University of Chicago. So it's fitting that this partnership brings us together as we unveil the blueprint for the quantum internet. Our shared history in the discovery of, of the fundamental laws of physics and great leaps in computation stand as the foundation of the future we are all striving for. It's not a stretch to say that when fully built, the quantum internet will bring incredible, and yes, as Dr. Oshlam pointed out, unexpected benefits, much as today's internet's already done. But to realize those benefits, we must make the needed investments in research and development programs to engage the very best minds in this endeavor. And it's here that our department, the U.S. Department of Energy, will take a leading role. Congress passed and the president signed into law the National Quantum Initiative Act, which authorized $1.25 billion in quantum research demonstration and application projects. It is through this funding that we will establish several national quantum information science centers that will drive our research efforts and accelerate the breakthroughs in quantum information science and technology. These new investments will build on, as Dr. Zimmer and, and Dr. Kearns mentioned, the great work at places like Argonne, where scientists are entangling those photons on that 52-mile network not very far from here. I know that we will build on this milestone and continue progress toward even more incredible discoveries that are well within our reach. At the Department of Energy overseeing this project is Paul DeBar, our Undersecretary of Science, who you heard from just a few short minutes ago. Paul obviously brings a great deal of knowledge, of expertise, even though he is a Navy guy. That's an inside joke, I'm an Army guy. And of equal importance, passion to the task of establishing a quantum internet and that passion that was so evident in his remarks. I have every confidence that in partnership with the amazing leaders of the national laboratories and from academia that we heard from today, Paul and his team will once again show the world that man's reach should exceed his grasp as together we make the quantum internet a reality. In 1893, the world's attention was fixed on the city of Chicago as you hosted the Columbian Exposition, which showcased ideas, inventions, yes, a few curiosities from around the world. Again, today we see Chicago and its esteemed university as the incubator for technology that will change the world. I commend all of you for your continued commitment to this project and I look forward to working with each of you in the future. Let's go change the world. Thank you for the honor of being with you. Thank you very much, Secretary Bouillant. I'd like to remind uh, everyone listening uh, online that we have two upcoming events following today's uh, press release, where we'll be discussing the quantum internet. Next week, please join us on Thursday, July 30th at 1 p.m. for an Ask Me Anything session. And on Tuesday, July 28th at 2 p.m., we'll be discussing the quantum internet via Twitter chat. I want to thank all of you for coming here today. I also want to thank the 100 plus people that helped us organize this event in a safe manner. I thought it was very exciting, a much needed reprieve from what we're facing currently. 
Thank you all for coming. It's been a wonderful occasion.